This week I read Colson Whitehead's new novel, Zone 1. I wrote about half this video before realizing that I was giving a glorified plot summary, and even though it was a totally solid a plot summary, I scrapped it. I'm not here to tell you what happens in Zone 1, or any of the other books I talk about on Brave Little Books, because you have Google for that. And I also provide helpful links underneath the video that link you to more information. So suffice it to say, there has been a zombie apocalypse. Take note of that past tense. By the time we enter this story, the world of the action-packed thriller has passed. And no, our protagonist is not a zombie-killing, baby-saving badass. In fact, Colson Whitehead makes a point of reminding us often that Mark Spitz is the epitome of mediocrity. Average dude with a capital A. It's sort of a funny idea to imagine the most average among us being the most likely to survive. I mean, I guess being average means Mark Spitz has as likely a chance of surviving as anyone else. But in Zone 1, his mediocrity acts kind of like a superpower. It means Mark Spitz can fit in anywhere. He's a chameleon. He sees what's required and does exactly that, without fail. It also seems to mean that he's on some kind of special terms with the universe. He gives what's required, and the universe gives back in turn. No really good luck, but no really bad luck either. This kind of mediocrity isn't really average at all, it's exceptional. So maybe the idea then is that there's really no such thing as average. Because averageness is actually its own kind of special. And when so many are already dead, can it really be normal to be a survivor at all? But I think this focus on what it means to be truly ordinary raises interesting questions when we start talking about scale. If the middle of the pack is the safest place to be, then the middle of what pack? Am I right? Because average has changed significantly here, post-zombie apocalypse. It used to be that Mark Spitz was average because he had, you know, average SAT scores, and he worked an average job, interacting with people on social media for a coffee chain. But now, Average is shooting the brains out of what used to be people, and looting protein bars from empty buildings. The new normal has much higher stakes. But some things don't change. People are still people, and they make human mistakes. They get attached and go back for each other, and they crack under pressure. They're nostalgic for things, for organic produce, for hard drives full of family photos, for television. Circumstances change, but people don't. They adapt to the new normal, they get bored, and they get their hopes up, as if they're at the end of the beginning. Reclaiming New York and then rebuilding our whole American society. Rather than the other possibility, which is the beginning of the end. Just a lull before the zombies claim us all. This was his world now, writes Whitehead, where intellect and ingenuity and talent were as equally meaningless as stubbornness, cowardice, and stupidity. But I couldn't help seeing the irony here juxtaposed against Mark Spitz taking down zombie after zombie from the top of a van while his teammates flee. There's really no such thing as the Great Leveler, is there? Even in the zombie apocalypse, we'll still be full of quirks and subtleties. So not even Mark Spitz can be truly normal. The only real advice I can give you is that if this is how it goes down, you don't want to be in Connecticut. Connecticut really doesn't fare well in this showdown.